Last time on Square Roots, we catch them all because once you pop, you can't stop. Buy a bucket of companions and have an airship of fun. Two all beef princes, special sorcerer, Gao Rail Mog Terra on a sesame seed bun. Classic RPG podcast, full of zaniness and fun. I am your host for today, Johnny John Brandon, as Jonathan. No, as Jim Banks is. Um, I don't know. What do you want to say? Jim's doing mm. unavailable, shirking one off. Okay, no. out. No, nope. out. I try to say off and out at the same time. Oh. Jim has been traveling for his uh, day job. <sighs> Jim hates this game. Jim hates Final Fantasy VI. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And he wants to be the one square rooter who hasn't played it. Yeah. There's always got to be one. Mm-hmm. And now it's Jim. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jim. Uh, also with me is my beloved co-host, Matthew Van Zant. Hey-o. And Vanessa Petticoat. Girl, <laughs> I'm trying to give you a, a middle name, but then I realized that you don't have a last name, so no, it doesn't because work. I'm Vanessa, and that's all anyone needs to know. <laughs> Is petticoat a good uh, good middle name? I do have several layers of petticoats on right now. Which is weird for recording a podcast. It is. I'll, you know how we have to do that noise filter for just set to ruffles? Because mm-hmm. of all the ruffling petticoats? Mm-hmm. Vanessa, I can still see a sliver of ankle, so you're going to either have to cover that thing up, or you're going to have to go straight to jail. What do they call that that school marmy collar that sort of goes up up around the neck, and like usually is like closed with a uh, clasp or a necklace? Mm, You mean like the one I'm wearing now? Yes. I don't actually know the name for it. I just call it my good stiff Sunday collar. Good stiff Sunday collar. Uh, So on this podcast, the Square Roots. Uh, podcast for classic RPGs and fun. Uh, we play a classic RPG one chunker at a time and you play along. Or you don't, you just listen to it. That's fine too. And we are at our last episode for Final Fantasy VI or III, depending on what version you've played. And uh, yeah, if you haven't started with the first one, I'd recommend going back and doing that. I mean, the first episode of this series, not... Uh, <laughs> the first Final Fantasy. Not Go going back. back to- <laughs> play them all up to episode VI or III, depending on the versions that you're playing. We are not playing these games in chronological order, by which I mean we don't play a, diff- a random chunk of the game. We do play the game in... Whoa, catfight again. I'm sorry. It's just, it's a constant cat fight at my house. Man, I don't know how Jim explains this. What I'm saying is, we choose a game, we play it for a while, it doesn't have to be, like, in the proper series order. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm explaining too much. It's getting out of my hands. Yes. Matthew, help me here. Uh, what else do we say, or should we level up? Uh, did you mention that we're like a book club for games? No, that's probably a really good way to put it. How about mentioning the fact that we're like a Let's Play for your ears? Okay. I like that, too. What about the fact that we're a video game for your mind? Whoa. That's true. What about the fact that we're like a cult and that I am referred to as Big Daddy (laughs) in this cult? (laughs) And you are all listening to this required to worship me. Oh. Well, that's cool. Daddy? Oh, no. It's me. Oh, You're a no. little baby oh. with flesh eyes. <laughs> oh. I nope. love you, big daddy. <laughs> oh, I thanks. made a little shrine. 
the I have a little bit of you. I love you oh. too. Oh. I have uh, your so hair and your toenails clipping. Keep that clipping. horny grandma away from that little baby. Oh, oh. no, Granny. <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> so we have a segment called Level Raise Up. Raise her up to be a horny baby. Which Let's we're going to do now, where we talk about how we gain skills and abilities over the week. Matthew, what skills and abilities have you gained? Um, I don't. Why did you phrase it like that? I don't know. I thought it was fun. How did you level Why up? You, wh- thank you. I went to see a movie called Crawl. It was a bad movie that I did not enjoy, but it had a riff tracks over it, and I did enjoy that. Oh, so that was fun. Like, so it was a live riff tracky taping? Yep. Well, it was the encore of the live rip crap rip 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 crap <sighs> rip track i haven't really talked today something i didn't really think about have not spoken a lot today have done a lot of laying in bed mm-hmm. uh it was a uh the encore of the live riff track taping and it was uh great the movie itself i'd never seen and it was horrible 80s fantasy garbage i think i might have seen that one actually Crawl the Conqueror. I wouldn't. I would not know where to dis, like start discussing it. It's <laughs> such a fucking weird movie. Which uh, which riff tracksers were on this episode? Uh, it was the normal ones. The what are they? Bill, Mike Nelson, Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and uh, Donald Trump. I think. Uh, What's his name? Who's the other one? Uh, Joel? Joel. No, Joel's never. Joel's not a riff tracks guy. Oh. Hmm. Um. Mm, the guy with a French name of some kind. He's one of the Mads. Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. TV's Frank? <laughs> no, the other no, one. It's the guy that played Tom Trace, and the guy that played Crow. Is that Trace Beaulieu? Yeah, that's probably it. Oh. Trace Adkins. Okay. Tracy Chapman. All right. Well, uh, I hope that was fun. It was. It was pretty good. Um, I'm glad I got to see it. I didn't decide to go until the very last minute. Do they um, it, it, it separate themselves from mystery science in any particular way, or is it just the exact same thing? I've never listened to a riff track. Uh, it's the same thing. I mean, they don't do the characters, obviously. They don't have the conceit of Mystery Science Theater 3000, but otherwise, it's, it's the same thing. It's pretty entertaining. They're still funny. It's like one of those things where it's like a live comedy and like every joke that you get isn't gonna like make you fall over but like they're funny it makes you smile it's kind of like a podcast (laughs) oh oh we're not making people fall over i mean i am uh john is with his breath whoa brother sick burn (laughs) am i right vanessa yeah he's got total vanessa oh go put on another pair of petticoats okay (laughs) i also purchased a game called hollow knight for the switch oh how is it and it's hard it's hard i die a lot i get lost a lot is it like a sprite art like a 16-bit looking game or no it's uh pretty well it's uh, it's it's animated looks like an animation you know oh kind of that modern style of of metroidvania um i'm not too far into it but i am getting lost a lot so that's not to the funnest um but i also played it a lot today when i was kind of stoned so uh <laughs> That might have something to do with it. I keep meaning to try playing driving games when I'm really drunk and see how bad a driver I am. I played that game. It's called Going to Taco Bell. No. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, that's. I guess that's about it for me. Not a ton. Just uh, just some Rift Tracks and some Hollow Knight. I'll report back with more Hollow Knight once I figure that fucking game out. What about you, Vanessa? How did you level up? I love the theater, the theater loves me. Going to the theater is the place I want to be. And there's one kind of theater that I love above the rest. Steven Sondheim, Steven Sondheim, Sondheim is the best. I went to see a production of a Steven Sondheim show called Passion. Passion. Fashion is the fashion in France. Clang, 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 clang. It's, of course, the great Stephen Sondheim hit. Passion is the fashion, parenthesis, 
in France. End parenthesis. <laughs> of course, everyone knows that yes. amazing classic. Right up there with Send in the Clowns as his number one hit. Uh, Passion is, of course, based on the story of Fosca. It was a great production. Uh, it was done alley style, so with audience on either side of the stage that was set up like a runway. Very difficult to direct that kind of show. They did a great job. It was beautiful. The singing was beautiful. I was tearing up. The orchestra was great. And uh, the full nudity was as promised. <laughs> Fashion. <laughs> it's a great show. What is alley style? Uh, that would be like a, a catwalk runway, but with audience just on either side of it. Pardon me. H have I stunned you with this revelation that you can configure See, a stage in such a way? I was thinking it was going to be it was going to be the audience in the middle, and then two stages, one on the left and one on the right side. Ah, that would be a reverse alley. Uh, oh, also a uh, popular sex position. <laughs> I see. Uh, so what would you give if you had to uh, invent some sort of rating system for the mm -hmm. theater? Uh, let's say like um, no uh, number of knowing winks, best yes. being two mm -hmm. and worst being 16. Mm -hmm. How many knowing winks would you give this show? Uh, I might even give it as high as a four or something. I really enjoyed oh, wow. it. But I wow. I really genuinely love Sondheim's writing, and I loved the orchestration of it. And uh, Sondheim's lyrics are just wonderful. It was orchestrations by Jonathan Tunick, who is wonderful. And uh, it was a great show. Not one of his most popular it was popular with critics and won the Tony Award for Best Musical in 1994, but the audience uh, had mixed reaction to it. Some attribute that to the main character, Fosca, being sort of masculine and aggressive in her characterization. And famously, during its Broadway run, uh, when Fosca fainted on stage in the play, one of the audience members from the balcony yelled, Die, Fosca, die, because he was so outraged by the character. <laughs> wow. Mm hmm. That's really getting into it. Yep. Not the sort of audience participation Sondheim likes. Well, maybe he would, because it's so, you know, obviously the person was very moved, but then Sondheim is uh, famously very reclusive and private and quiet, so maybe he wouldn't be pleased with such an outburst. Sondheim's usual favorite thing is for people to suggest like a place and a character, and then he writes a song in the middle of the play mm -hmm. about that, right? Mm -hmm. He yeah. sits at his piano in the center of all of his productions, and uh, he will, you know, kind of cue the actors based on changes in music tone, you know, whether they should be scared or amorous or uh, surprised or happy. And uh, he, he has written them lyrics ahead of time, but they really need to be skilled to keep up with his pacing and just wild change of emotion. <laughs> so unfortunately, this, uh, this little bit of sarcasm slash fun uh, probably won't be understood by some people as a joke. Because yes. If I you think... understand the joke, write it into <laughs> squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. And congratulations, you'll be the one. Direct it to Matthew. Yes, please direct it to Matthew Van Zandt, <laughs> number one Sondheim fan. Yes. And uh, again, lots of, lots of jazz dance, as is famous in Sondheim productions. So did you see Wiener? No, this was terrible. There was an adult male and an adult female, uh, both nude on stage, but the man uh, stayed on the bed and oriented himself to always be on his stomach or under a sheet, whereas the woman got right out of bed and sang her song, just standing on the stage, full buck naked, very brave, great performance. <laughs> and of course, that was uh, Sondheim's classic song, Boobs, 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 I'm a Lady, I've Got Boobs. Yes. Sondheim, notorious ladies' man, uh, yes. loves the boobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he always wants more TNA in his show. 
Yeah. Um, you know, really I, scandalized the theater world with some of his numbers and uh, his insistence that actresses wear very skimpy outfits. Right. Uh, and he has been criticized for, you know, writing very weak female characters because usually they just come on stage and they're like, oh, my goodness, I'm so horny. <laughs> well, he did try to make up for that by having an all girls cast of A Night at the Hooters, but uh, that's not one of his most uh, li- beloved plays, really. No, no. A Little Night Hooters, I believe you are oh, referring sorry, to. A Little Night Hooters. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> oh, we have fun. <laughs> John. Yes. How did you level up? Oh, I was on a pod. Cast, Ooh, which is stands this one? for Internet Pod mm-hmm. Cast, mm-hmm. like a broadcast. What? You lost me. What's an Internet Pod? An Internet Pod was a music storage device that came out in uh, 2003 as a sequel to the Internet Mac. And it was a, a hard drive with a small screen, a black and white screen, that uh, would play several gigs of music. It was a... Uh, it was a quite a handy little device. Isn't it an information pod? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, but this this uh, podcast was called Vidja Game Apocalypse. It is on the Laser Time Network. Hey, I've heard of that show. And it's got uh, Michael Reparaz and Chris Antista and Matthew Allen. Yeah, among other people. And uh, we talked about the best uh, starting weapons that you never want to give up because they're better than any any other weapons in a game, like the Dead Space laser, how all the other weapons in Dead Space are garbage and the first one is the only one you need. Or the hammer in uh, Red Faction Guerrilla. Anyway, go, go check that out. It's the most popular podcast I've ever been on. What? <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Nothing. You know what? What we lack in numbers, we make up for in enthusiasm. It's true. I'm actually really tired tonight, so... Oh, no. (laughs) That's bad (gasps) Our enthusiasm. People's enthusiasm for us. I also worked Mm. like uh, 60 hours this week, uh, so it was a tough Mm. week for Johnny. And then he... Then I got back to here and played 10 hours of Final Fantasy VI. I finished the game about negative 10 minutes before recording. Well, congratulations on completing the game. Yay. Uh, speaking of, why don't we go talk to that uh, little Moogle over there and head on Ooh. into the quest mog. Kapoor, po. Hey, little buddy. How are you? I'm pretty good. Well, Watson, why don't you get the fuck out of here? Jeez, <laughs> oh, Mog, no. If you want to hear me swear at a game, watch some of my Titch... Not Titch screams. Watch some of my Twitch screams. Uh, Titch streams. Watch some streams. of my Tit screen. Tit... No. Twi- ah! Twitch streams. Yeah. <laughs> tit screen. John is <laughs> very influenced by the YouTube work of channel. Stephen Sondheim in his streaming. He has cut... <laughs> John has cut two little squares in the front of his shirt. Yep. That's for he my. He calls them his tit scenes. Mm-hmm. My tit scenes, some hardcore tit scenes. Mm-hmm. Check out his uh, homage to anyone can titsel, the uh, <laughs> Stephen Sondheim classic. Ah, uh, yes, a little night hooters and anyone can titsel. <laughs> now, um, last time on Square Roots, we gathered our Quest party log. before venturing forth. Quest log. This time on Square Roots. We have uh, uh, finished up the game. We're going to play until we finish it. So let's talk about how we did that. Well, I went to Kefka's Tower. Oh. You see. Did you do anything? And then I beat it. Ooh. And then I had finished the game. Did you uh, find out that Duncan is actually alive? Who's Duncan? 
Duncan is um, Sa- oh, yeah. Saban's old master that teaches him a blitz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went and learned how to do the ultimate karate. It was actually a pretty entertaining scene with little sprite dolls doing really stupid looking attacks <laughs> and like spinning in the air. Jumping on a house. Try to do a little Final Fantasy Dragon Ball Z fight. It was adorable mm-hmm. and terrible. But Duncan is dead, isn't he? He, I thought he was, but it turns out he is not. He faked it. So that you could murder his son for him. <laughs> yeah. What was that, that all about? Right. murdered his son? <laughs> yep. Maybe that whole thing was just like a, a, a long con or like a... Do you remember the movie The Game? Yes. yes. It was all part of his training. I, yeah. <laughs> you expect the son to walk out and be like, see? Mm-hmm. Or maybe Saban's like, oh, wow. So you've been alive the whole time. I guess this must mean your son's still alive. And, and uh, Duncan's <laughs> like, what? Well, you know, a- a- after your son killed you, I, I-, I thought I killed him, but you must be fine. And Duncan's like, wait, my- you killed my son? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my plans got horribly wrong. That movie was so good. Except that it's, think it holds up? it's got that guy in it that I really oh, don't like. I forgot. Uh, my level up that I told myself earlier today I was going to do. I saw Ant-Man and the Wasp. At the same time? At the same time, on the same screen, in the same film called Ant-Man and the Wasp. It also featured that guy from the game. And Michelle Pfeiffer. I, that's true. It did have that guy from the game. I watched uh, an episode of Seinfeld today. That was a like running, um, farce of like Jerry and George get outed in the paper, and it was a very bizarre experience to watch. Outed as what? In 2018, it was it was a bizarre experience to watch in 2018 because I literally have not seen anything like that in I don't know how long, um, because it was like. God, I don't even know how to describe it. It was such a weird experience. Like, it was, it's funny. Out it is gay. Did I ever answer Vanessa's question? I don't think you did. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, a New York uh, University reporter mistakes a joke between Jerry and George for them being uh, a homosexual couple. And then as things do in Seinfeld, events escalate to the point that she is convinced that they are gay. And in a relationship and the way that it's handled is just like 90s liberal Hollywood, I guess. Well, God, it was weird. I did like that. They kept screaming, not that there's anything wrong with it. I know. (laughs) But there was the one point that like at first I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. And then about halfway through, I was like, geez, man, like at some point you realize that. The assumption is like, this is terrible. Like he calls his parents and they're freaking out. His, George's mom has to go to the hospital. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's I so love disturbing. George's mom, though. The, oh, the, uh, the, not that there's anything wrong with it. Every time they go like, we're not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> Gets done to death so many times that by the end, even I was kind of like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, we get it. Can I tell you a true story about something that happened to me tonight? No. Can I tell you, you, John? Try to seduce Jason Alexander? No, but I wouldn't put it past me. Uh, No, thank you. And I would put it past me. Uh, I was out with uh, two of my friends. We were having dinner, and uh, there was a... You know, pretty small restaurant, so the table next to us was pretty close. It was two men, and at one point, one of them takes a phone call. And he went outside, and the guy who was left alone started talking to my friends and I. And he said, you know, of his companion, oh, uh, Mike and Phil are in love. And we were just like, okay. But then we realized later he was, like, meaning it as a joke because they were work colleagues. But wouldn't it be funny if these two men were in love, who Mm -hmm. he was taking the phone call from? And we were just both, like, or the three of us, we were totally baffled by this. It was so, like, that's not a joke. It's not a joke in 2018. Also, stop talking to us. A a guy at the bar I was at last night, um, he was inside at one point, made the hilarious joke 
I fucking hate fag. It was great. Just yelled it out to the entire room. Wait, he hates what? Faggots. Oh. Just decided to scream that out. Oh. It was really great. Yeah. Uh, he was chit- he was chatting up the owner of the bar who also made some slur. I can't remember what it was, though. Just He says, like, that's gay or something like that. But it was enough that I was like, okay. I already am on the fence about this place. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's, don't it's the go owner. there anymore. And then his buddy that he's talking to is like, I, oh, I, I hate faggots. And I was like, Jesus. What fuck. the hell? You know, um, it's not that. Like, strange. sometimes Florida. when I was Old on the men. Metro with Julio, my ex boyfriend, and like, he had his arm around me or I had my arm around him because, like, seats are very small on the Metro in Montreal. Mm-hmm. And Montreal's the most, I think, maybe the most liberal city in the world. And still, I had there was like a teenage kid that like was leaving the subway car and then turned around and then just said, like, blanking blankets, you know, except Mm -hmm. not blankets, you know, at us. And that wasn't great. And then another time, this lady, like the same situation, this lady sitting across from us was like giving us the look of death. And I was like, I don't know if it's because we're a gay couple or an interracial couple. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you think it is? Uh, anyway, I guess to wrap this up, I just, it was such a wild experience watching this 90s version of like what is okay, like gay, but like liberal gay humor mm-hmm. of like, you know what I mean? Like I'm having a hard time putting it into words, but it was certainly a very weird experience but because it was both it was funny because it's still seinfeld and it's still funny but it's like the funniness is made uncomfortable and then on top of that there's a whole layer of like and everything with this picture is wrong to start with like the whole thing feels off because of the way the the whole subject is handled like it's just so fucking bizarre to watch in 2018 having not watched anything like that since probably the 90s i don't watch a lot of old tv I find it, you know, I find it weird, uh, in, you know, people get on, uh, Bill and Ted's and saying like, oh, wow, that's such a 1989 or 1990 movie. Cause they, they say the word, the, the other F word quite a bit in it, but then like you think things have progressed, but then you think about like, uh, the hangover in 2009, which uses it, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of bizarre, like, that seems, like, way too late to be dropping the other F-bomb. Mm-hmm. When was that South Park movie? Fucking 2006 or that something? That was 2000. Yeah, I guess it was around 2000. I was, like, 19. Anyway, that was it. That was my other level up. It was just a weird experience that I had today that got me thinking for quite some time. Just, I don't know. Avoid that. Or don't. It is very much like a time piece. Like a, t- like a period piece where you're, like... Look at the window of how fucking people acted in the 90s. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember it very well. I was coming out yeah. at the time. <laughs> I just don't watch a lot of old comedies and stuff like this, so it's really weird to me to see it. Like, the oldest stuff I watch is, like, I think, other than this, the oldest thing I've watched is Star Trek The Next Generation in the last probably decade, and that doesn't ever have these ish- anything like that because of the... It, um, the the way it dances around stuff like that is very weird. Like, there's no mention of homosexuality. The closest they come to it is the episode about uh, the androgynous people who got rid of gender. Mm-hmm. And that one would have been a really interesting episode. Uh, right, the guy who played Riker wanted the his love interest to be played by a man to make it, you know, sort of more on the point of what they were talking about. But uh, the network wouldn't allow it and made it played by a woman. Anyway, back to Duncan. Oh, yeah. Donuts. I forgot I we were talking coffee. about that. Duncan. The animation for this looks really stupid because he like, it looks really funny because he goes like in a circle around it, something and it goes like, pow, 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 pow. right? Mm-hmm. That's this one. I love the animation for this one. What's it called? Uh, it is called Phantom Rush. Phantom yeah, Rush. Right. And uh, I got two people in a row doing it because I got another character who can also do the Phantom Rush. Hmm. Let's talk about getting that character. Okay. So uh, there's an island off in the top right corner. And this, people say, although I didn't notice it myself, this is right where Daryl crashed her airship. Oh, interesting. Uh, which may be a clue as to uh, who this is that we meet. Ooh. 
but when you go into this island and walk around, you get a zone eater attacking you. It's a big you. old worm with a big old wormy mouth. Like uh, like in from uh, the Dune mm-hmm. books. And but this don't worm, eat zones. It eat you. This worm is a vor enthusiast. Mm-hmm. It likes to swallow you up safe and alive. It has a whole group of people living inside it. Yeah. Uh, so you have to, the trick is not really to fight it, uh, because it is possible to beat it before it swallows all of your party members, in which case you get the swallowies back and nothing good happened. But uh, if you just stand there and let yourself be eaten, you get to go on a vor venture. Yay! A real vor venture! A real vor venture! You get taken down to the tum tum of this wormo. Mm hmm. And the tum tum of this wormo looks like a cave. It's a big old cave with a mm-hmm. uh, exciting platforming section. Uh huh. Is does that qualify as a mini game? Maybe. Hmm. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it does because of the weird timing involved mm-hmm. to get the special prize. Mm hmm. Um,. But uh, let's just talk about it. Yeah, so, let's do it now. There's w- these wooden bridges with these guys running back and forth. And if you touch them, they will knock you off the bridge. Mm-hmm. Who uh, are these guys, Vanessa? Uh, I guess they're guys who have been zone eaten before. Do you think that they've established this is like part of their religion that they've created in order to deal with being shoved inside the belly of a worm yeah they uh they are going to shove anyone who comes along and be like now i am the zone eater but uh Mm -hmm. they're too small to actually eat these people so they're just gonna knock them off the ledge maybe once they like fall to their death they'll go down the flight of stairs and eat them down there ah i think that part of it too is just there's not you know it's bigger inside there than you would expect uh, but there are a lot of monsters, and so I think that these guys have established their own sort of monster-free zones along these planks, ah. and they are trying to protect their personal space. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. There's mm-hmm. a, uh, a item for Realm, the one that you talked about before, where she can control monsters with her yes, paintbrush. Her... I never really used that that much. Oh, I liked it. Oh, I liked it. I just had her, like, be in my... She has the highest magic stats, so she was, like, my go-to mage for Mm -hmm. throwing magics at people. Who? Realm, Mm -hmm. the little girl. Yeah, her control brush lets you take control of one enemy on screen, and then you get a turn with that enemy. Basically, Realm's turn becomes the monster's turn, Mm -hmm. and you can select Mm -hmm. different uh, moves for it to do, like some of its special attacks and things like that. I don't think I used her special. I don't think I sketched anyone or anything during any por- point of this uh, last couple of chunkers. Yeah, once you get some more powerful spells, she has more use as just a mage. You're right. So, yeah, I just like, I'm gonna go ahead and use Ultima mm-hmm. and Quick and Double Cast and Go Go, repeating double casts and mm-hmm. stuff. I also got the item that makes someone hit, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, I guess. That's the ancient castle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you go through there, and then at the very bottom, after solving some jumpy puzzles, mm-hmm. you find a mysterious person. You get Go-Go. Go- Go-Go boots? Go-Go. You mean a po- pogo? Pogo stick? You get a pogo stick? Go-Go the mimic. The Uh-oh. I think I missed something. Yeah, you mentioned that you didn't get Gogo because uh, I remember you were confused when uh, Gogo's name popped up during the end credits, and you were like, "Who yeah. is Gogo?" I thought I got everything, but I missed Gogo. Well, let me tell you, and I don't don't care care. Gogo is a person or something similar, uh, wearing a whole set of robes. And uh, Gogo does not speak. Uh, Gogo just stands there in his or her colorful outfit uh, with scarves covering his or her face. And Gogo has one skill, and Gogo's one skill is mimic. And what mimic do is it mimics whatever the character who went before Gogo did. For example, If you have Edgar 
and Edgar uses a tool, then uh, Gogo will use a tool on Gogo turn. If you have Terra and Terra dual casts Ultima, then Gogo will dual cast Ultima on Gogo turn. So, John, you said that you have to go into the menu to do something with Gogo. Yeah, do you know about this? No. Okay, so this is weird. I thought Gogo's whole thing was what you were talking about, that they Gogo's the beginning and end of Gogo is that they can emulate what someone did in their last turn. Mm-hmm. It is not the beginning and end of Gogo. Huh? Pixel Jaw told me, hey, go to the status window for Gogo, something you never do, because mm-hmm. why would you? That window is dumb. If you go to the status window, you see Gogo's command list and it says mimic, and then it you can take all the other commands of every other person in the game and program you have up to four. So you can put in like item or blitz, for instance, or mm-hmm. tools, for instance. What? And you can have the like have Gogo be doing Sabin's blitzes and then using Edgar's tools. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. So I had wow. Gogo set up so that uh she I could just do blitzes because having two blitzers is amazing. They like look at each other and say, "Let's blitz." And then high five. <laughs> so I would do, you know the the one you're talking about the Phantom Rush where they uh run around each other. I would just do that twice in a row for free doing, you know, 20,000 damage. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So that is how I beat the boss in 10 minutes. I, the final boss of the game was doing lots of blitzes and stuff. Uh, yeah, Gogo is really fun and way deeper than I thought, because I thought it was just Gogo will copy what the last person did. And no, there's a lot more to Gogo. So thank you, Pixel Ja, for uh, showing me how that worked, because I didn't know. I have a feeling many of us didn't know that. I did not know that either. And Matt didn't even know that Gogo existed. So I'm sure that he did not know. Go. I did know about that. You don't know my life. <laughs> did we talk about Shut up. Umaro last time? We did. Yeah, right? Yes, a we bit. did. Yeah. That's right. Because Umaro, I got Umaro's item, I guess, that allows them to throw things. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that. Because that yes. is my favorite attack in the game. <laughs> he throws the other party members, and it's glorious. Yes, that is great. That so happens I actually... in uh, Mario as well, right? Bowser throws the party members. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I really uh, enjoy that as a game mechanic. And I, I, I got a lot more use out of Umaro and Gogo than I thought I would, especially Gogo. Gogo's uh, was in my top four when at the end of this game where you have to rank people to put them into your party. Right. Yeah, Gogo was number four. Nice. Right in there. Uh, next up, after we get... Oh, so let's talk about fan theories about Gogo. Mm-hmm. There are many of them. Maybe Gogo is Bannon? Mm-hmm. Maybe Gogo is Daryl. Maybe Gogo is General Leo. Maybe Gogo is Rachel. Maybe Gogo is Realm's mother. Ooh. Maybe Gogo is Jesus Christ. Oh. Like the second coming? Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, that's bad. I mean, there, I guess it does make sense, because uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ is after the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. It's in the Book of Revelations, people! <laughs> Since Kefka's a clown and Gogo's a mimic, they're like arch nemesis correct? You think that clowns and m- 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 mimics? Mimes. <laughs> I was trying to say mime and mimic at the same time. <laughs> clowns and mimes are arch nemeses? Yeah, they're like cats and dogs. No, I would say more they're like uh, geologists and cartographers. Oh. No way. I would say that they're more like... Sharks and whales. Mm, I think they're more like... Natural enemies. Oh. I am, if I had to choose between the two, I am definitely way more into mimes, but I grew up in Montreal where miming is acceptable. What about you, Matthew? If you had to choose between hanging out with a clown or a mime and you were not allowed to attack them and they had to do their bit, uh, which would it be? Option three, hang myself. <laughs> Ooh. I'll hang out myself. <laughs> The only way to win is to n- is not to play. Vanessa, clown yeah. or mime? I think I would choose a mime because I like physicality and uh, I don't like being talked to by performers. And I don't like horns or anything yeah. that honks. Oh, 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 oh. 
or flowers that will squirt me with with soda water. Right, and I don't really find someone doing pratfall after pratfall after pratfall particularly funny. Even if it's Rowan Atkinson? You know what? Even if it's Rowan Atkinson, who oh, is, wow. you know, sort of a mime. It's true. Mr. Bean, he only talks in, uh, like, weird... Right. That's, is that's he more totally of a mime, mime or a clown? I, I guess he's more of a clown. a clownish mime. Yeah, I mean, he, he uses props, certainly. A mime can use props, like this here invisible rope that I'm trying to pull. Whoa, where'd you get that rope from? Or this ladder. I'm climbing up right now. Wow, bye, Jean. Azer Bijan. Matt looks trapped in a box, but he's given up on getting out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll die in here and I'm okay with it. <laughs> There's no air holes, Matthew. At least poke some <laughs> air fine. holes. No, I think I'd rather not. <laughs> Just go ahead and bury me now. Anything's better. Uh, So, Gogo is awesome. Next stop, Doma Castle. Ooh, things get spooky. Ghosts. 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 Go ghosts what you know are ghosts. So there I know that um the em- the emperor had opened up Doma Castle but I forgot to go. Mm-hmm. So I went now. Uh I wonder if you don't get him to unlock Doma Castle do you just not get this stuff? I don't know. Maybe it unlocks after the world of ruin anyway. I'm really not Could sure. Be. I bet it's that. I bet mm-hmm. it's that. So Doma Castle is all about Mr. Cyan. He has come to uh, say pay last respects to his family, mm-hmm. who got poisoned by Kefka, and uh, he misses very much. And they took the train to Ghost Town. Yeah, so they just they get to the castle, and he's like, Whew, "Boy, I am sleepy. I don't know about you guys, but I just want to get some Z's and shove them into my brain." And everyone else is like, "This is a good plan." Unfortunately, he gets trapped in his dream. What? The world goes crazy. I guess we're all trapped in his dream? Like we all have sleep paralysis? Kind of. I've had that before. It's real bad. It's real bad. And I hate it. We kind of get sucked into his brain like an X-Men villain would do. Oh. Like, it's like we're fighting the Shadow King. Yeah, I heard of that guy. Yeah. I haven't. You know, it's well, like when Xavier goes inside someone's mind and suddenly he can stand and he's like, dooba 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 doo, dooba 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 doo, dooba 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 doo. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Dooba 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 doo. Except for instead of a Shadow King, we get the Three Stooges. That's great. Dooba 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 their own business, I guess. <laughs> Their names are Uh huh. Uh-huh, Curlax, uh-huh. Laragorn, <laughs> and yep. Mobius. And Snorlax. No, and Mobius. And, right, Mobius. You know, Curlax, Laragorn, Mobius, Curly, right. Larry, Mo. I got it. I right. I got the reference. <laughs> so they're these right. zany fellas that they show up like little kids and they are uh, trapping you in the dream, and they're going to try and kill, I guess, kill Cyan to trap him and his family in this nightmare forever. And you're like, not on my watch. And you, like, knock over a bookcase or something. And, uh, yeah, so now you have to go through Cyan's dreams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to skip this, but then I heard that there was a Genji glove in them, their you're dreams. You're obsessed with getting them Genji was. gloves. It's true. That's the only one I got, because I didn't play this game good. I got four. <laughs> but you only have two hands, so what's even the point of four? Because <laughs> there's other people in the party. Oh, other people. He put them on his feet. Oh, that's a great Made idea. Made them into socks. Leg warmers. Because everyone knows there's no such thing as a Genji boot. And what are you talking about? <laughs> um, You get to the 
Uh, Genji Glove? No. Nope. The, the Dream Stooges are, like, there, and they're being jerks, and you're chasing them. Mm-hmm. And you have to, like, find all the other members of the party? Yeah, because you all get scattered around. Yes. Uh, you never find Cyan. So you will do this with three people maximum. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, then you're in this like weird dreamscape where you're like walking on these. Gl- it looks like a bit like Fantasy Star Four had a couple of dungeons like this. Mm-hmm. Where you got like this psychedelic background, and you're walking on these glass plates. Mm-hmm. And so first you find gather your party, and then you have to fight the bosses, the Dream Stooges. You fight the uh, yeah. Every time you find one, they just run away. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you get the Dream Stooges together. Yes. And it's a bit, they, they're a bit like uh, the sisters from Final Fantasy IV. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is healing, and uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, they, are, they were not hard. No. Yeah. One of them is Iggy Pop, dressed as a Klingon. <laughs> yes. One of them is Iggy Pop, dressed as a Klingon. Mm-hmm. The other two are David Bowie and Mick Jagger. Uh, David oh. Bowie's sort of wearing a full leopard print outfit, and uh, Mick Jagger has his shirt tucked into his pants. Oh, okay. But not buttoned. It's really <laughs> very Mick Jagger. Uh, so after you kill these dudes, you suddenly are on the Phantom Train again. And there's some puzzles here you can solve to get some extra treasure. And then you have to, like, mm-hmm. map them, the uh, to unlock a door. You have to get all the chests open in a certain way. And you move some furniture in order to get some extra items. Mm-hmm. And that includes a Genji glove for Matthew. Yeah, finally, finally he has it. I did it. And then you kill Cyan and exit his dream. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. And then you kill the three stooges and exit Cyan's That's dream. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. You, and then you kill Cyan's dead family and exit Cyan's that's dream. The next part I, I was not expecting was to be in Magitek armor running around the caves of Narche again. Yeah, that was very interesting. Uh, I don't. Well, I guess Cyan has some folk, like maybe like traumatic memories of trying to ride one of these, but he he never was piloting one in Narche. That was Terra. Yeah, he hates technology. But I guess he's been to Narche since then, so maybe that's where that came from. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so you do some uh, fight- fighting here, and then you go to a uh, back to Doma Castle, and Cyan's wife and son are there, and they're like, hey, uh, the Rexol totally has Cyan. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Rexol? Never heard a hole. Yeah, what a wreck soul. You made that up, stupid ghost kid. Yeah. And uh, at this point, I got killed by wreck soul so many times that I had oh, to no. like, grind here for two hours to get oh. past this dumb part of the game. Terrible. Oh, It's okay. Um, so, the wreck soul fight. Wreck soul is a spooky, ghosty man. And he's got two little spooky buddies. Mm-hmm. And his thing is, he has an attack where he possesses a person in your party. Yeah, and you don't know which one. And you have to kill them or turn them to stone. Mm-hmm. Do that. Don't kill them. Uh, and then he comes back and you can punch him for a while till he goes back into another member of your party. And mm-hmm. I just wasn't quite fast enough because he has those two little guys hitting you at the same time and they they respawn so mm-hmm. you can't kill them uh what i did was i grinded a bunch and then i just like punched him to death with Saban. Mm-hmm. and that's how i won that little area you know i remember reading something that said that the two little respawning guys are there because programming didn't understand when rexol went away that the battle wasn't over so they had to put two respawning enemies so the battle would always be going on, even when Rexol possessed someone. And I get is that why if you banish them and kill them both, or somehow kill them both at the same time, they uh, the the fight ends, and you mm-hmm. don't you, but you don't get the item, which isn't a very good item, anyways. Yeah, and it's it's pretty good. It's just a defensive relic. Mm-hmm. But I did I did it right. I punched him to death in one turn. So basically, he just possessed someone once, came back out, and then Saban was like, "Hey." Meet my fists. Nice. 
bam, bam, pow, pow, punch, 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 punch. And then the stupid guy, Rexel, got wrecked. Mm-hmm. And then and... Uh, we can pick up uh, Matthew's favorite magicite, Alexander. Alexander? Yeah. Yay, from Final, Hamilton? From Final Fantasy uh, Nine. Yeah, the one what That's... a city. Yeah. And uh, you can also get a new sword. I almost forgot. I had to go back to the castle because I forgot Alexander because it's he's like Alexander comes like pops out in the throne room. I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, I forgot to go get that. So I went back and got it. Yeah. At least you can go back. Yep. Yeah. I did the same thing. So uh, what's next? We did Doma. We did the Dream Stooges. Did we do an opera house? What is there to do at the opera house? I didn't house? do the opera house thing. Oh, so I did it. Have it's Vanessa. Great. So okay. you go to the opera house and that music is playing. And uh, the impresario. It, the hell was that supposed to be? Uh, beautiful music. It sounded like. That's not what it sounded like. It sounded like. You know, classical music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. you go to the opera house and... Uh, Couldn't tell the difference. Literally, sounded just like classical music You know what? Me. Maybe you Is should... Is Beethoven on the podcast? Right, I'm right here. I'm a big dog. <laughs> Let me lick your face. Lick, 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 lick. <laughs> you deaf ass dog, get out of here! Oh, I'm a Go get big, some better ears. I'm a big silly dog. Look at my face. Uh, I like dogs like that because you can like shake their heads and their lips flap. You like go look at you, you silly buddy, and then just shake their muzzles a bit, and they love it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, <laughs> anyway. So you hear the dog Beethoven barking. Yes. Uh, the uh, impresario is very uh, off-put because there is a dragon in the middle of the stage. And Do you think the- he's called that because he's constantly impressed? Uh, he is... Oh, a podcast? That's amazing! Impressed? I'm very impressed. <laughs> um... So, yeah, he's like, there's a dragon on the stage. There's a dragon? Oh, my. Impressive, it's so strong isn't it? And powerful. Uh, the opera that they're putting on isn't about a dragon. So, opera? the dragon. I love opera. Has got to go. Uh, and he asks you to go onto stage and get the dragon. Uh, the way you go onto the stage is you remember way back in the opera scene sequence where you had a choice of three levers to pull. Yes. And if you pulled the wrong one, it would open up a trap door and you would fall onto the stage and ruin the show. Yes. Well, this time you want to fall onto the stage. So you go back to that room with the levers and you pull the lever with the trap door underneath it and you slide right down that trap door to fight the earth dragon. What a great job, guys. I'm very impressed. Mm-hmm. I love it when the beat drops. <laughs> uh, dragon, use uh, quake and landslide and things like that. So good to be floating. Yeah. Good to be floating. Yeah. Kill- I found there's a lot of bosses, actually, in this chunker, where it's like, I, if I put float on myself, they can't do any damage. Yep. Huh. Or you have the equipment angel wings that uh, make you always mm-hmm. fly. Why would you waste one of your two precious relic slots on that garbage? Because you want to fly. Yeah, but float lasts between fights. Mm, maybe you want to walk in the Victoria's Secret fashion show. I guess so. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what you do at the Opera House. It's not super exciting, but it's fun to see our old pal, the impresario. (laughs) Wow, you came back to see me. That's so impressive. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it kind of is. We, like, survived that blimp crash. and uh, Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with those flying boots. (laughs) (laughs) And your big dog. (laughs) Aw, I like the impresario. Mm -hmm. He He should have been around this whole whole time. (laughs) He would be a great party member. That's a good question. If you were to make up a party of four NPCs from Final Fantasy VI. Oh, I thought you just mean he'd be great for a party because he'd be like, love everyone's stories so much. (laughs) 
who would you choose to be in your party? Wait, like who would, would be my top? Ultros. Top. Ultros is a great choice. Sorry, could you tell what's the premise again? The premise is if you were to make up a party of four NPCs ah. from Final Fantasy VI, who would you choose? Real Siegfried. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ultros. Mm-hmm. Ultros' his friend Sneezy. Mm-hmm. And the Impresario. I think that's a great party. Yeah. I would choose Ultros, of course. Uh, the Impresario. Ozer, because he and the Impresario are friends, and he's a weirdo in a basement. Ozer doesn't look like he has... A, he it looks like he has m- mobility issues. Yeah. I don't know if he'd be a great party member. And uh, I would... Well, he could ride on Ultros. It's very ableist of you, yeah. John. Oh, well, that's true. He could I ride guess on float. the back cast of float. Ultros and cast float. Yeah, he can wear the angel wings. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I would also pick uh, the corpse of Rachel. <laughs> What about creepy guy who loves the corpse of me? No, he can't come. He's too creepy. I think I would include the guy from Zozo that didn't want to fight you, but then fought you anyway. <laughs> that guy's great. <laughs> Isn't that just Amarant from Final Fantasy Nine? I bet it's the same person. Good old Zozo. Mm-hmm. So next up, we go to Figaro. Yes, because we hear a rumor. I heard a rumor. Rumor has it she don't have your love heart. anymore. Oh. oh, something about a broken heart, I thought. And she she don't have your love anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, they they if you are driving your ancient castle across Figaro, you bump into something. Mm-hmm. And you can and you choose can get, to, like, keep going, or you can stop. If you uh, have paid off the guy at the base of the cultist tower, he's like, hey, uh, here's how you get some special treasure. But you have to pay him 100,000 gil. That's a lot. Or you could read a fact, which tells you to go there. Yeah. I did that. Or you can just listen to your pals, the Square Roots, on the Square mm-hmm. Root podcast, and we'll tell you. So you, you, you move the f- castle and then stop it and then go to the, the, jail, the jail cell on the right, mm-hmm. back the way you came in to fight the noodle monster. When you jumped on the turtle. Yeah, the SpaghettiOs fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, this brings you to a special cave full of pretty hard enemies and uh, some treasures. And you get through this cave and you get into this old castle. This ancient castle that has been buried. And this is from the original War of the Magi back in the day, a thousand years ago. Wow. you get some like sepia tone cutscenes of the castle being attacked, and the chancellor's like, "We need Odin to save us." And Odin, like, there's an awesome animation of Odin cutting people in half, and the yes. little sprites get cut in half. That mm-hmm. was great. Everybody get cut. <laughs> yep. And then Odin, unfortunately, gets turned to stone. No, stoned in. St- <laughs> he got stoned, stoned in. in. Stoned in. Edward Stoden. Uh, oh, St- huh? Sto- Stoden. Mm. So you, uh, there's a little path off to the side that's kind of hidden, and that's to the queen's room. It took me forever to find it. Ugh. Not as much. <sighs> the facts I was reading, which yes, I was cheating. I guess if you call reading a fact cheating, uh, did not explain the next part very well. Oh, when you have to like go to the dungeon and whatnot. Well, yes. you, you like find her diary, mm-hmm. and then you can go. You go up to the throne on the right, and then walk five steps down, mm-hmm. and then hit A. I don't know who who would have found this. Oh yeah. Also, when you look at Odin, he dis- he uh, gives you a piece of magicite, yes. but it's not very good. And uh, per her diary, she is thirsty for some esper. Thirsty for some esper. Yeah, the queen was secretly in love with Odin. Forbidden love get... between a human and an esper. Now, is the horse part of it? The horse? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're Od- saying. Y- yeah, y- yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, because Odin, when you summon him, is a man-looking guy, but he's always riding his horse. Is that part of it? Oh. <laughs> 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 
Mm. <laughs> or did she just, can he get off his horse? Oh, uh, wait. Okay. Can he uh, <laughs> step off of his horse? Can he dismount they... his horse? <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping. <laughs> or is he always mounted? <laughs> can she? No, I'm uh. not going to make that joke. Uh, so... Yeah, what do you think? Do you think that Odin is the man and the horse together, or is Odin the man who comes riding a spectral horse? Let me see. I'm taking a look at a picture of Odin here. There's not in the original graphics a lot of distinction between Odin and the horse. They are of the same color palette. You know, the way it looks, the horse sort of has this beefy horse neck. And these little horse legs, and then Odin's leg is just kind of there. I mean, hmm. John, I don't think he come off this horse. I don't know. I don't think he come off. So what you're saying is, he's part of it. Yeah. And the horse okay. is part of him. And she's way into that. She is, you know, she's always had a centaur fetish, and she's uh, found <laughs> the closest thing that she can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that a helmet he's wearing with the antlers? Or is it just his head? Hmm. I think I it is a know. helmet. I mean, he definitely has some kind of metallic outfit on. I'm looking at the Odin HD art. Uh Oh, that's Final Fantasy IV, though. In Final Fantasy IV, it's definitely there is separation between the horse and the man. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about this Final Fantasy VI art. Uh, You know, you can see legs, for sure. Yeah. But But they do have the same coloration. Yeah. And the same sort of musculature. Yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, let's get back to, uh, because Matthew's back. Mm -hmm. We're still talking about that, uh, you know. (laughs) So, uh. Are you? I was really hoping you would be through the goddamn stuff by now, because I just want to talk about Kafka's Tower. All right, we're almost there. So, uh, you go, you unlock this extra set of doors down, and the staircase, the, the guide made it look like it says, and a staircase appears. Yeah. But. I had to like look on a fa- a video to figure out where this staircase was. Me too. It's in the queen's room. Yeah, there was like no indication. It was crazy. I actually think I did the same fucking thing. Did you? You couldn't find that staircase? Yeah, in the queen's room. And are you still talking about Figaro? Yeah. Holy shit, you're still talking about Figaro, you fucking clowns. Anyway, <laughs> we had a bit of a diversion. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Yeah. And, uh... Then, so, yeah, you get down to this basement, and you see a dragon that you can fight. Mm-hmm. It's one of these, like, eight dragons you can kill for fun times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was very easy. And uh, then you find the uh, the statue of the lady, and it, she touches the Odin magicite and turns it into Raiden. Yes! He's Raiden that horse. Raiden being the thunder god or um, the super hot guy from King of Fighters. Mm -hmm. And Raiden is much better than Odin. Mm -hmm. Because Raiden... Raiden... Go ahead. Cut everyone in half. Oh, and he teaches you quick. Yes, which is so useful. uh, You know, once you get double cast, you can uh, have your second spell be quick. Mm -hmm. Then you can do... (laughs) Ultima, quick, oh. Ultima, quick, Ultima, quick, and then just kill the boss. Amazing. And never have the boss move. <laughs> that I didn't sounds do that. fantastic. If I had an extra hour, I would have done that because I just didn't have enough time to grind Terra to get quick. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about that strategy until the end. All right. So next up, after we let this ancient castle go, we go to Ebbets Rock and Strago's hunt for Haydn. And I didn't have time to do this, so Vanessa, oh. fill us in. Okay, I will. So first you need to make a little party with uh, Strago and Realm in it. And uh, then you head on over to a town. What town that is, I will tell you in just a moment. I'm <laughs> drawing it out to uh, add some suspense. Uh, you go to the Masa, where they're from. So uh, you stumble across this guy named Gung Ho, because he's Gung Ho. 
for hunting this Hyden or Hidden. Uh, he's been injured, and uh, he and Strago talk about, oh my god, we we have been trying to get this beast named Hyden or Hidden, spelled H-I-D-O-N, for so long. Uh, can't believe you found this beast and it hurt you. And uh, he's like, I swear, my dear friend Gung-Ho, I'm going to go get this monster. Uh, so he tells you where the monster is. It is on this rock called Ebbets Rock. Uh, you head over there with a couple of your friends. It's very dark. It's so dark that all you can see is a little circle of light around your party while you wander through it. And uh, there's lots of talking treasure chests. And <laughs> as you walk along, they will uh, start blocking the path. So I started climbing Kefka's tower. So, it's, <laughs> and um, it's rock. This treasure chest so hungry, and you have to give it 22 pieces of coral. This p- whole gimmick is a piece of shit, and it was particularly a piece of shit on iOS with its terrible virtual D-pad, and I hated it, and it sucked. Oh, you went to Evans Rock, you too? Yeah, I did all nice. of this. So, uh, Except for Gogo. Once you get all the coral, uh, you get to fight uh, Hidden or Hyden. Let's just choose one. Someone choose one. I can't keep saying them it's both. It's the Hydon. Okay, it's the Hydon. Like Hydon? No, Hydon. Yeah. Uh, hey, Don. Now, is that Don or Donald? No, just Don. Just Don. Just mm-hmm. Don? Yeah. Now, is it Don or Don? Don. Don. So. <laughs> Hayden can teach Grand Delta Donald. lore, which is Strago's like kind of ultimate lore attack. Yeah, and uh, so you should just—it's pretty mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> if you want it, you can stand around until he gets it. But if you teach Strago Ultima, it's better. And uh, he will also uh, use something called Crypt Dust attack and uh, turn people into a zombie. But if someone's mm-hmm. already dead, it will revive them uh, as a zombie. It's not great. And uh, then you just kill him. I didn't have any trouble with him. Did you, Matt? No. In fact, I got the Grand Delta like in the first 30 seconds, yeah. and that was it for me. Then I just mm-hmm. killed him. And then uh, you get back to the Mesa, and you're like, we did it. We got, We got it. Yay! Hooray. Party! And that's the end of that. And... That's the end of that. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh... That's pretty close to just about everything we can do before we go to Kefka's Tower. There's a giant cactar in a little desert. Giant cactar in a little desert? It has a mustache. It has a curly black mustache. Oh boy! Yeah, what? Jim's not here. That's right. He's not here to hear about it. And tell us about this cactar. Uh, you go to this little desert spot on the map, and there's cactars there, normal cactars. And if you kill enough of them, this uh, big giant cactar with a curly Q mustache appears, and you can fight him. And then he gives you a piece of magicite or something. And it's a cactar magicite. Yeah, that's right. Do you ever summon it just What's to see do? him show up? Uh, I never actually tried it. I wish I had. Um, do, you, do you ever use the summons? No. Me neither. Yeah, I really didn't either. I certainly didn't watch. I didn't certainly didn't use every single one of them no. even once. No. Because they're, they're not that imp- like I really like the Final Fantasy seven, eight, and nine ones and ten and yeah, I, I'll do them once just to see him show up and it's usually pretty fun. But in this one's like eh, it's just like a sprite of a thing. Mm-hmm. This little cactar, uh, it summon does the thousand needles attack like a normal cactar does. Mm-hmm. It can teach you teleport, vanish, and hastega. Vanish, I used a lot to buff up my party and train them. Uh, what I would do is I would go back to Doma Castle and just have one party member out there on the plane who had learned vanish. I would cast vanish on myself. Equip him up with that experience egg that doubles your experience. And basically all of the mobs in that area just use physical attacks <laughs> and vanish nice. lasts until you get hit with magic. So you can just kill them and never get hit 
and level your characters up to, you know, 60 there around pretty quick. And with four or five level 60 characters, you shouldn't have any problems with Kefka's Tower. Yeah. You ever heard of Kefka's Tower? Uh, no. Can you tell me about that? Is that where the mimic lives? Is that where we get the mimic? Yeah, that's no. Where we got Gogo. Oh no. <laughs> no. See. No, no. One thing, I, a question I have about Kefka's Tower Yo-yo? is: Is Kefka's Tower so so built of rock or bodies? Because sometimes it looks like bodies, but it's sixteen bit, so it's hard to tell. Is it just rock in the in the uh, cell phone version? I think it's I a little bit of don't. both. Yeah, like it looks, it's a kind of cool look that it's just these giant piles of bodies mm-hmm. that, that Kefka like brings out of the ground at the end. Yeah, I think that Kefka's tower is sort of built with the uh, ruins and despair of the world. In the other episode, I was confused between Kefka's tower and this other tower. The one I thought was Kefka's tower was the cultist tower. That's what I tried to tell you. And you guys were like, no, no, it's not the cultist tower. It was. It was. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Who I was, was wrong. right again? Vanessa. Me, I'm Vanessa. Matthew. Vanessa was right. I was wrong. Anyway, so thank you, you get for in there, admitting that, John. It- you fly your plane. Oh, sorry, I'm interrupting you while you are being oh, gracious. Yeah, I'm offering you a sincere thanks for. Uh, I know it's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. It's not funny. You know what? It's over. Okay. Anyway, so I was wrong. Vanessa was correct. Uh, you fly your ship over this weird flat tower that just looks like some squares in the ground. And uh, you land on it. And that's how you begin the final assault. Mm-hmm. One thing I thought was really cool, and I didn't realize it until I got there, was this is built on the remains of Vector. Oh, that makes so much sense. And that's why you're walking through like all these parts of the Magitech factory and like all the the exploded vials of uh espers mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Like so it's all been like mixed up and corrupted. So it's like part body cave and part weird dungeon and part uh Magitech factory. Mm-hmm. And uh, you start at the top, and you just sort of have to go through this maze, but you pick three groups. Mm -hmm. And you – so you need 12 people total. Well, you can have less. You can have, like, one person in each group if you want. That would be dumb. Yep. (laughs) I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, you can – if you have all 14, you leave two out of it. Who did you leave out of it? Who stayed home? I did not take the Yeti, and I did not take – Go-Go. Go go, right? Because you yeah. didn't have go go. Yeah, I think I Vanessa. left out Gao and Gao friend. Vanessa, <laughs> how dare you? I think I left out Gao and Mog. Mog sucks pretty bad too. A lot of these characters suck pretty bad. Uh, Mog's pretty good at magic, and so's Gao. I didn't you well, actually? No, I used Mog's healing quite a bit. Like the the one the planes one. I use that one a lot to give them sunlight, which does like as much as Kiraga, and it it's you know free. Nice. So I use that quite a bit. Uh, Gao, I I didn't use any of his rages, but he's also a pretty good magic user. So I just he just happened to have my Aga spells, so I was using him a lot too. Strago and Setzer stayed home because I don't like either of them. Oh yeah, Setzer, he's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, who wants to roll? Although, I think you get fixed dice in this dungeon. Yes. Which I think that's the one that lets you choose the reels, right? Mm-hmm. Blech. <laughs> Blech. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, with our full parties, we ventured forth. And uh, there's not a lot of plot here. There's a couple of dragons you can fight. Uh, there's a... What's the f- there's a big robot boss. It's the first real boss of the dungeon. 
The first real boss of the game? Yes. It's like a big mech that you are fighting with guns on both sides. It's He's called the Guardian. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like this Guardian. a lot. It was a bit like Locke's Dungeon, where you're unlocking stuff. Unlocking. Uh, for, like, <laughs> you're switching uh, switches, except that I went too far and missed one of the switches in Path 2 to unlock for Path 1, so I had to go back and do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you end up at this door where uh, Group 1 is going through the middle, and then Group 2 and 3 are on either side. And one thing I did notice is these four-ton weights over these switches you have to stand on. Mm-hmm. I was like, is is, it, is uh, Ultros going to show up? He does not. <laughs> that would have been so good. <laughs> You're just like, I'm here. So you have to push those to open the doors for everyone or to unlock paths to this walkway. And then you fight the guardian robot. And the guardian robot's really easy mm-hmm. as long as you've you know got good magic. Can and I say something? Yeah, of course. If Ultras had been the secret final boss of this game, I would yeah. have been so happy. That would have been the most beautiful moment in gaming, hands down. That really forget would Portal, be fucking fantastic. Forget Bioshock. Forget all the other games with big twists at the end. Ultros being like, I had my tentacles and everything the whole time. Ugh, it would have been amazing. What what happens if you like you know the final scene where you're you're meeting Kefka and uh instead of fighting him, Ultros just burst out of him and he's <laughs> yes. like I killed I killed Kafka for you yeah. and then you could be I'm like I'm the hero of the game yeah. <laughs> and you're like oh my god I thank you it on the blood of god my name is Ultros <laughs> the prince of octopuses <laughs> Well, I'd love to do an after years type quest, except it's the the events of Final Fantasy VI, mm-hmm. and you're playing as Ultros and his gang of friends. <laughs> shoot, shoot. So anyway, is that it? Did we finish the game? Well, yeah. You get up. There's really no plot other than you meet the three uh, w- of the Warring Triad, and you have to fight them. Each one fights one member of it. Uh, they were pushover mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Yep, Kefka was not a pushover, no. but the, the Warring Triad was a pushover, but he had absorbed their magic powers. Mm-hmm. That's why they were weaker. There's and also Kefka the very last dragon w- hanging around here. Yes, there's two dragons. Oh. Yeah. Well, the second to last one isn't the last one. There's the Bones dragon, yeah. and there's the Ice dragon, I think, maybe. Bones dragon. <laughs> yep. He's a zombie dragon. Yes. He inspired uh, Bad Dragon, our sponsor. Right. They're not our sponsor. We just wish. Yeah. So you get to the top of the tower and you have a nice little talk with Kefka. He's like, hey, guys. Um, you know, I was practicing my hello. Yeah, he is. And, He's like, uh, hi. <laughs> 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 and then he starts shooting random laser beams at the planet. Yeah, he's just like, I'm going to destroy yep. everything. <laughs> and you can't stop him. And then he's like, and you, what are you doing this for? Yeah, and he's Tara's like, you guys like, are dumb. We're going to kill everything. Like, what's your issue? I'm doing this for love. For love. Mm-hmm. Everyone and steps he- forward and has something to say. Yep, and I think yep. that even uh- your party members that you didn't have show up at this point. Uh, no, Strago was not there. Okay, for my, then maybe for I me. did have Gao with me because I remember Gao being like, "Gao have friends." Yep. So I I never got to hear Setzer and and uh, Strago's dumb stories, mm-hmm. but they all each give a reason. So like Locke was like, "I'm doing this for someone I love," mm-hmm. and uh, Savin's like, "I'm doing it for my dumb brother." Yeah. And uh, yeah, what what else was there? Gal was doing it for his friends. Mog was doing it because he met people. Yeah. Umaro wanted to help, and Gogo didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Gogo's not really chatty. Yeah, Gogo's just like, dip, dip, dip. Yeah. Uh, Cyan has, is doing it for the memory of his wife and children, who he has made peace with. Mm-hmm. Uh, Celeste is... I don't know, doing it for love as well? I don't remember. Or to make things right, because she was in the Ember. I don't know. Right. And Edgar probably is just like, I'm a king. Like, it's my job to make you not kill my people. 
And Kefka says his very famous line, you all sound like something out of a self-help book. Yes. <laughs> Seems a bit pop culture-y, but well, we sure. we learn a lot. We learned that self-help books exist in this world. <laughs> yep. And, and uh, Kefka apparently has at least read enough of them to know what they say. I, do you think he really has, or has he just heard about them? And Maybe he's that just heard about them, and he's like, that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounds like he's getting his opinion from, like, conservative talk radio. That's what I was thinking, too! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kefka's definitely on 4chan, right? Like, no one's denying that. Radio oh, Free God, Vector. Yes. <laughs> Next caller. <laughs> oh, it's me, Kefka! I just wanted to say self-help books are stupid! <laughs> hey, it's Kefka. Oh Long God. time, first time, incel. <laughs> Dumb snowflakes everywhere! Everyone wants their special safe place. I'm going to make sure nowhere's safe. Nowhere! So his his goal seems to be to destroy the planet. Uh... I was supposed to have a baby with this hot blonde general, and then she's like, no, and she stabbed me in the stomach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Typical woman. Yep, that that is a typical woman. It's always stabbed me in the stomach. So I want to give you both some notes. Um, sure. Really strong, really strong, good off the cuff, new impersonation there. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, I like how you kind of went eighties cartoon character yeah. with it. Yeah, I was doing a it was really Cobra strong Commander. showing. Vanessa, I'm afraid that you just kind of didn't quite, you know, it didn't click with you. So I think uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to let you go. Actually, John's got the okay, part. Okay, no! bye. No! We need Vanessa. Vanessa is the key to our Patreon. Yeah, my mom is on there twice. Vanessa has the keys to the Patreon? <laughs> she does, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> She's the Patreon master. Mm-hmm. And I'll be sending myself a little something. Clickety click, click, transfer to me. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Vanessa, yeah. uh, Kefka then just says, All right, you guys aren't doing anything, I'm just going to kill you. Yep. And uh, this is when he summons his meat tower. Mm-hmm. Meatza pizza. <laughs> He's like, check this out. And uh, we get some great music. Uh-huh. Stage one. You can it's have... a stone guy with horns. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I really like this. John, I hope you use it as the uh, episode art. I think so the the it's a it's a tower and it starts with your first boss and then you kind of keep moving up and you, above each boss is another boss that's connected to it. Mm-hmm. Um You have to choose the it. order in which your party will fight along this tower. I think uh, I was saying before that uh the Fantasy Star 4 boss, where it's Dark Force on the beach, and he's, like, on one knee, was my favorite boss design, mm-hmm. until I think this uh, eclipses it. It's This boss fantastic. design is amazing. Yeah. It's uh, beautiful. It is phallic and erotic. It's great. Yeah. It's really cool art. And I think it's Nomura that designed this. And I don't, I, I've said before, I don't love Nomura's later designs, but this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is crazy art so it's like he's got a little bit of a shirt left he's got a f- clenched fist and some claws he's and big. some like he has wings. some like steam tubes coming out of him yeah kind of tying got- back to narche with all the steam and whatnot oh yeah so this guy is like hitting you pretty hard but i, I went through him like maybe two minutes i was using like re-raise and then dual casting ultima mm-hmm. yeah did you- we talk about the we oh shoot we forgot the cultist tower can we talk about that really fast we talked fast? about that last time oh i bet you you hadn't done it last time though i went through just like running up there yeah that's fine okay um yeah so i was double casting and then i'd maybe have gogo repeat the double cast of ultima mm-hmm. and i had re-rays on everybody which is really handy yeah because if uh one of your people gets killed without re-rays on them uh, they are replaced by the next person in line during this battle. I did lose two. I lost uh, Gogo eventually, and I lost Celeste. I can't remember how my... many I lost, but I had given everyone I could Ultima, so I was okay with it. I only lost Celeste, which was pretty pretty good. And I could have saved her, but something happened at the last minute. Yeah, that me. I don't she she got turned to stone right before the the level went up. Yeah. for me. 
Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what happened to me. Yeah, that was a bummer. Mm-hmm. Really stupid. And then the mid- so the middle level. The middle is- level is like a BDSM club. Now, everyone in the middle level kind of looks like Kefka, right? They do. They look like different sort of stages of Kefka. Except for the lady. It, well, you know, we don't know. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone has different ways of dealing with gender and mm-hmm. different aspects of their personality. So, yeah, you have sort of a uh, – and they're all naked, uh, except for the lady. But uh, you have a – no. No, guy, guy in the middle with the ponytail has little shorts on. Oh, does too. he have little shorts? Yeah. I guess otherwise he would be really exposed. Yeah. The lady's fa- – oh, the, 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 I'm looking at it here. Mm-hmm. The lady's face is like smushed into one of the pipes going up to the next level. Mm-hmm. It's really gross. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. – and she's like spread crossbow, <laughs> um, the – Naked blonde guys are all kind of spread out. There's one that has his back to you, and he's sort of turned blue, like he's started to become yep. corrupt. So it, he almost has. You can, should be able to see his butt, but there's no butt crack. Yeah, but if you look at it, it very easily could sort of be the story of Kefka because remember he was experimented on by these, oh. you know, things. So there's and that's why there's all the pipes yeah, and there's stuff all in these the bottom. Pipes. There's this one guy okay. who looks like he has a pipe kind of coming into him and. He starts to get, like, larger than the other ones. And what about the uh, Thundercat's head? The Thundercat's head? I'm not sure what you mean. The blue man is sitting on it. Oh, he is sitting on the Thundercat's head. I don't know. The Thundercat's castle. hmm Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, the blue guy seems to be thinking about it. Yeah. I-, I wonder who the woman's supposed to you know, be. You know, it could be woman- Celeste. Celeste. You know, if it's yeah, because she's chained up. Yeah, the magic tech research that was done on them. But Celeste is blonde, mm. and this lady has like brown hair. No head. No, you can see her I hair. Think her Does head hair? is sort of thrown back rather than oh, disappearing. I thought I thought it was smushed into that pipe. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think it is sort of the evolution of Kefka from normal guy to what he has yep. become. And level three, mm-hmm. the penultimate level, is him basking in the glory. He's sitting on top of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, next to uh, a woman looking down on him? Yeah, I assume one of the warring goddesses. Okay. Not like Terra or something. That uh, could be. You know, it's a very sort of Virgin Mary looking woman. Um, larger breasts and more naked. But it's just her torso. She has sort of a halo thing going on. It's definitely some religious iconography. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, she she does have a Mary thing. surrounded yeah, by sure. pipes that look very phallic shooting fire. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, like the steam is six. gone, and now it's firing. They are surrounded by fire-spewing xenomorph cocks. And there's sunlight shafts coming through yeah, the clouds. Yeah, it's very ethereal. There's a certain... This reminds me a bit of uh, Michelangelo... Not Michelangelo's... Who, who did the Sistine Chapel painting? Was that Michelangelo yeah. as well? Yes. Okay, so it does remind me a bit of like the the Adam touching God mm-hmm. on in the Sistine Chapel, like a little bit of yeah, that definitely. sort of musculature and color. Mm-hmm. It's a really cool piece. Yep. And Kefka is looking up to the heavens. Uh huh. But that's not it. That's not this it. This isn't the, the last. These are just like the story of Kefka, yep. not Kefka himself. Mm-hmm. So uh, the last one. You finally ascend up to where Kefka is, and he is. Totally naked. Uh, he has a a cloth sort of tastefully wrapped around him. He has uh, a big angel wing and a big bat wing. And he is become a god. He's just floating in the sky surrounded by radiant light. Uh, he is happy to see you. He's got a big <laughs> smile. He uh-huh. looks like somebody like, hey took guys. the Joker and an angel and tried to, like, mash them up. Yes, it absolutely does. I noticed that his big bat wing appears to be attached to his robe and not his actual back. Interesting. Well, he's got two wings. He's got the fluffy angel wing and then the I bat wing. I actually think he has three wings. It's oh, hard okay. to tell. It's either a split angel wing or two angel wings. And he's kind of like, uh, his pose, I would say, is like, 
one hand is doing the oh my heart Mm -hmm. like oh i would never and then the other one's like "Uh uh-uh stay away (laughs) i see that other hand is more like reaching out you know like oh i thought it was like like a blessing almost see i see that hand as in motion and about to point at his own penis because you know he's making like a <laughs> check out my junk. Like he's reaching. Yeah, it looks like he's reaching to move the cloth aside so that he can flash your group. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing really is sort of his penis that we crawl up. <laughs> and you. Uh, and meanwhile, behind him is like this heavenly. It's a weird combination because everything's disturbing but heavenly yeah, yeah. Like it i is. mean it's also a tower i think it i i, I think he, you're just above the clouds here and the sun is peeking oh, out okay. behind the clouds okay. which are behind kefka and your party who are somehow just standing on the clouds yeah yeah don't think about it <laughs> don't worry about it they're fine uh so yeah you have this final fight with kefka it looks great mm-hmm yeah uh, amazing boss design. Uh, definitely, I think, the best looking 16 bit boss for sure. And maybe one in my, all right, my list of top RPG bosses ever in terms of design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty it's cool. It's great. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So, do you think Amano started the whole angel wing, devil wing thing that became so popular in this series? Well, this is Nomura, and he, turned, he ran with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Isn't that what I said? Nomura started this whole trend? You said Amano. Oh, sorry. Although this does look like there's Amano sketches that this looks like too, so maybe they're both working on this. Yeah. I don't know. This does have more of like the Amano style hair. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that Amano generally does like the concept art, right? And then Nomura takes it from there. monsters. Yeah. Until later. Mm -hmm. When everyone became looking like boy models and k-pop bands Mm -hmm. anyway so uh yeah this is great you kill him and he's like what and he starts dissolving like the end of a movie that i don't want to spoil Mm -hmm. and uh one thing was that throughout this fight i got hit by uh blindness so you have those cool shades on whenever your characters are blind so tara double cast ultima to blow him up Mm -hmm. And had these cool shades on <laughs> as he was dissolving. <laughs> She's like, deal with it. <laughs> so you kill God, and everything starts falling to pieces. Was this fight hard for anyone? Yeah. Uh, I died twice. Oh, really? Yeah, I was level mid-40s, like between 44 and 49, I think, my levels wasn't the easiest, uh, but I did it. I had my people around 65 for the most part, and then some in the mid-40s to 50, and it was fine. Ultima, Ultima, Ultima. Yeah, that's basically my plan. Ultima and Sabin's, like, run, and, run around Kefka and smash Kefka. Yeah, right, about at the, right about here at the end of this game, I found an item that I gave to, uh, an artifact that I gave to Terra that reduced the cost of all of her MP to one. And mm-hmm. oh, wow. that made this whole end of the game super duper easy. Yeah. That's the economizer, right? Uh, I believe it's called the coupon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, uh, you combine that with her double cast artifact and she is pretty unstoppable. I only, I didn't have that one. I just had the gold needle or the, it's not gold needle, gold uh, hairpin or something. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I can't remember. The one, the one that makes it half. But I still had enough MP, so it was, wasn't an issue. But it was a it was a tough fight for mm-hmm. me. And uh, yeah, so the tower starts falling apart. Uh, all the immediately espers start dissolving. Mm-hmm. All your your magicites are floating up in the air and dissolving. Oh right, we forgot to it, mention there was sort of this uh, debate as to whether or not Terra would disappear if the espers disappeared from the world. Because well, that's they talk about that right now, oh, okay. don't they? Well, I think they had like, sort of speculated about it before they went in. Okay, yeah, she's like, I don't know, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, they talk about it on the airship before they jump in, right? Yeah, because they're like, if we go Kefka, all the espers will vanish from the world because we're putting the seal back in place. Is Terra yeah. gonna vanish? I don't know, but she turns into Gem and the Holograms, Terra, and is like. Oh, I didn't use trance. That would have, like, super killed them. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they 
Uh, you have to s- escape. Tara is leading you out, and you get little uh, vignettes on your way out of this collapsing fortress mm-hmm. tower thing. And each so it cuts to a book on a table, and uh, then it slowly goes down this table, and this table has items for each character in the game, and then you see a little vignette of them escaping. Mm-hmm. Like with Edgar and Sabin, it's a two-headed coin, mm-hmm. and you see them helping each other out. We also get their full names, uh, mm-hmm. because it uh, it tells you, like, Edg- so-and-so as Edgar, and it's like, Edgar Allan Poe as Edgar. No, it's Edgar Roney Figaro. <laughs> That's right. The San Francisco treat. His full except- name <laughs> is Edgar <laughs> Roney re- Figaro. <laughs> <laughs> Except that uh, realm is all is realm aroni. Yeah, <laughs> realm aroni. So there's two roni jokes mm-hmm. you can make. Choose whichever one you yeah. like. Sarah, uh, Tara's name is Tara Branford, and we learned that she's an alcoholic. Yeah, because her special thing on the table is uh, two martini glasses. Yeah, <laughs> which she never <laughs> has done any kind of indication that she was a drinker. So. <laughs> you know, after this uh, whole thing, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, the, uh, the what you see with her is she is losing power trying to lead you out of the exploding tower. Right. She's flying super saving style. Yeah. And they aren't sure if she is going to die. And also you, she talks to her dad in the Magisite mm-hmm. uh, trying to escape the tower. And the dad's like, hey, I'm proud of you, lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not sure if she has learned a hum- strong human emotion that might be enough to not have her disappear. Mm-hmm. Like love. Love. She knows how to love now. I've learned how to love. Celeste's thing. I, do you remember what Celeste's item on the table was? Mm, was it a sword? I think so. I, I know half the people's were swords. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Celeste's thing was that uh, she drops the bandana that she picked up that helped save her life and not want to die. Mm-hmm. And she goes back to pick that up and then Locke has to save her. And he's, he chastises her for going back for that old ratty thing. Right. He doesn't understand the significance. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another good one with the shadow where a shadow uh, tells interceptor to leave because he's going to die on this tower. Yeah. For some reason shadow has, <laughs> well, remember his dream sequences where we learned that he sort of left his friend to die. Yeah, I think that that's what Shadow is doing, because he talks about his friend and he's like, buddy, I'm sorry I let you down, but now I'm going to make up for it by leaving myself to die, just like I left you to die. Uh, Also, uh, I'm orphaning my daughter Realm, because Mm -hmm. uh, fuck her. Yeah. Shadow is trash, and I hate that character. And this final decision cements him as one of the worst characters I've ever (laughs) seen in one of these games. Like I didn't hate him as much as until we got to those flashbacks and everything, mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh, he sucks. Yeah, well, I guess he figures that this very old man will just keep taking care of her and hopefully not die. Um, Gao's flashback is him, or the cut to him escaping from the tower is he shows you how to or shows Celeste how to jump down the mountain, mm-hmm. and Celeste safely gets down, and he keeps going. And uh, I think Umaro might have one of my favorites. Where Umaro sma- punches through some rocks to yeah. help them get out. <laughs> he just makes his own exits. Gogo, however, uh, is helping Celeste press buttons at the same time by mirroring her. Yeah. Except when, then Celeste leaves the room not thinking about it, and Gogo gets trapped inside. Mm-hmm. And just see her eyes blinking. <laughs> yeah, she's just eyes. like, bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any other good escape sequence bits? I think you've covered the best ones. Yeah, I don't remember Cyan doing anything particular. Yep, they're all pretty excited about their victory. So they all get out onto the ship, and yeah, they're chasing Terra, but Terra, they manage to just barely get out in time. Mm-hmm. Terra falls to the ground, mm-hmm. what looks like to the ground, and everyone's lying there dead on the ship. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of the game. That's no, the end. It's not the end. Oh. They look to the stern of the ship. Or the bow, mm-hmm. whichever one you want. It to, the the front one, and <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's called the, the front poop one. Deck. Right, 
And the poop deck is full of Terra, and she's in human form. She didn't die. Yay! So to celebrate, they do a whirlwind whistle-stop tour of the entire world. Mm -hmm. A victory lap. Uh, Yeah, a victory lap of the world. So they wave at... uh, Well, first you hear her, like, disembodied voice telling Karina she can do it. Katarina, that she can can have that baby. Right. And then they're encouraging them to escape the explosion. And, uh, yeah, she's on board. And then you cut to her waving at... Katarina, who's holding a baby, which Dwayne grabs, and then they all run outside to wave at the ship. Mm -hmm. And the kids are like, Mom's back! And she's like, psych! And flies away. (laughs) Yep. I just wanted to stop by and say that I do know how to love, but I also know how to (laughs) stop caring. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna learn from my friend Shadow and abandon children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you fly over Figaro Castle and everyone's running. Mm-hmm. You fly over some other towns. And uh, the last, the credits of the game are just the airship flying mm-hmm. in various shots. Looks pretty rad mm-hmm. for a 16-bit game. And that is the end of Final Fantasy VI. Wow. We did it, and it was we pretty good. It. Hopefully now I don't have to keep listening to John Carl of Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> okay, six. Six. So, what are you squarely against? Oh. oh. Hmm. Well, we usually do use this section to do, a, like, a final opinions yeah. on the game, right? Final game Matt. opinions. Do you want to go first, Matt? I'm doing the questioning here, John. Oh, sorry, sir. He's got a knife. Hmm. He's scratching himself with it. Wow, that's it's, intimidating. It's one of those, like, elect- not, not Electra, but it's like one of those little shorty knives that you use with like a longer sword, like a baby katana, uh, and a dirk. Yeah, uh, there's a it's a word for it. I think it's with N. A dirk. With a anyway, K. a Kesha. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, so I am very roundly for this game. I had a lot of fun. There's a couple of bosses that sucked. I think Rexol is a garbage boss that is super annoying, and I hated having to grind for two hours to be able to beat it. Um, but overall, thumbs up. And also, like, getting everything in the game, like, you can spend an easily another 30 hours doing every single thing and getting everyone having all the good spells. But at that point, Kefka will be so ridiculously easy. Why do it? And, but it's pretty. Uh, I think the original 16 Brit graphics are gorgeous. Uh, I think it's funny. Uh, the translation's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I like all the characters. Like, you know, it, the writing's not amazing, but it's interesting. Like, I, I didn't get bored. And uh, I think it's definitely up there in of in my top, you know, whatever of the games we've played so far. I think it's, it's really up there. I really, really liked it. I don't know if I liked it Persona 3 much, but hey, the apples and oranges. What about you, Vanessa? What are you squarely against? Or Roundly 4? Yeah, this is the best Final Fantasy game. It's real good. Uh, The characters are great. They do a really good job of giving everyone unique abilities. Uh, It's super fun. It's got humor. It's got adventure. It's got romance. It's got a great final boss. It has a great uh, second act surprise with the world becoming the world of ruin. And everything you have uh, learned is totally changed. Uh, It's great. Super good game. 10 out of 10. All the Moogles. Uh, all the Chocobos. You know, Chocobos weren't very strongly featured in this game. I don't know that we mentioned them uh, very often. Perhaps only in... Well, there's Mog. Mog is not a Chocobo. How dare oh, you? Right. It was the escape <laughs> Sorry, that's a from the city. There's the escape yeah. from the city. There's a Setzer's Salot thing with the Chocobos. You can ride a chocobo. You can ride a chocobo. There's some chocobos in the opera. Um, oh, yeah. 
Anyway, 10 out of 10, great game, best Final Fantasy game. John. Ah, I already, uh, I already yeah. Matthew. I just saw a cockroach the size of a small dog run across the floor of my bedroom, and that's all I'm going to think about <laughs> for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I had to trap, I had to trap a, like, three-inch spider and throw it outside yesterday. I did not want to do that, but... You know, they're good for killing bugs. I don't like bugs. So yeah, yeah, I, I usually usually catch catch them. big ones die. I usually do that. <laughs> I saw a little black spider in my bathroom today and I decided I didn't like it, so I killed it. But uh typically I'll leave something like that alive for my cats to kill because they need fun in their life. Um uh, my, I this the one in particular I, my cat saw it a couple of days ago and didn't just like pawed at it and that's it. Yeah, uh, she has one job. I know. She doesn't kill bugs. She'll she'll pick up rodents, but that's it. So I am roundly for Final Fantasy VI. It is a very good game. Yay! Uh should Yay. come as a surprise to no one. And it is a bit it was a bit on the disappointing side, kind of, because you know, expectations are just too high for something like this. There's just no way to avoid it. Right. Um it's yeah. definitely I can see why it's so well loved, and I can definitely see um how uh, people, you know, how the love for it has endured to this day. Um, I would certainly not call it better than some of the later Final Fantasies or the Personas. I mean, there are deeper plots out there with better characters, and but it has a lot of you know, more, more fleshed out characters. But it has a lot of redeeming qualities, and it looks very nice. So yeah, I think it's a really great game, and Kefka. Uh, I, again, expectations were a bit too high. I, I expected him to be more fleshed out and instead, uh, you know, he's very one note, but the final version of Kefka has a great design and they make him a good dislikable villain by making him like a crazy town poisoning genocidal maniac. He's definitely not the most interesting villain in Final Fantasy yeah, he's games. No, uh, he's no ninja. What was Jesus. his name in nine? Uh, Kuja. Kuja. He's no Kuja. Or Sin. Yeah, I really like Kuja. I like Kuja. I like uh, Sin slash, uh, uh, what's his name? Seymour. Seymour. Yeah. Ah, Seymour. You know, it's just like, it's it's like looking at, you can look at plenty of other mediums where just there's such radical changes that it just changes the way you look at it. Compare, try, you know, watching Jason and the Argonauts and then comparing it to Jurassic Park. It's a bit tough. <laughs> As great I don't as something like try that, as great as something like Jason and the Argonauts was for its time, it mm-hmm. doesn't hold a candle to things with realistic effects and you know modern technology. So, uh, and and they just tend to you know. Well, anyway, I don't need to ramble. Uh, but overall, it's a really great game, and I'm glad that we played it, and also um, you know can say that I finished it. You know what I'm really excited for, Matthew. I'm excited for Oblivion. Yeah. Me too. Actually, I should have been playing it this weekend instead of Hollow Knight and PUBG. Uh, if we haven't, I know we've already announced it, but just a reminder, uh, the next episode will be Oblivion Episode 1. And hopefully Jim will yes. be here. Elder Scrolls 4, Oblivion. Um, what? I'm like how, a rogue. Do I don't to? know that I care about... Um, I've done Assassin and Thief so many times, I might go sideways and do Wizard or something. I might just decide to do whatever the fuck I want. How about we play until we meet Martin at Kavach and close the first Oblivion Gate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good stopping point. That's a mm-hmm. that's a good first chunk. We'll probably each do uh, an, a start the starting mission for whatever guild we're choosing. So mm-hmm. I would say... Uh, okay. Whichever guild you are choosing, if you're playing along, don't worry about it. We'll have the first mission covered. Yeah. Yay. Maybe the first uh, few. I don't know how many there are what, exactly. But. I feel like there's only like five or six per. Mm, there's magic guild. Yeah. There's Thief. fighty guild. Mm-hmm. Thiefy guild. And thiefy guild. And murder guild. Murder guild. And we're each going to do uh, at least one of them. I have accidentally already done all of them. <laughs> Jeez, Vanessa. Sorry. You better have copious notes as you play. Mm. 
Uh, listeners, before we go, can we remind you of a thing that we have? It's a Patreon where you can give us money every month. And mm-hmm. for that money, you get things. There is a $3 level where you get a monthly uh, podcast. We call it Square Roots Versus, where we play a bad game and talk about it. Uh, or it switches monthly, uh, bi-monthly with Instant Classic, where we play a new game and talk about it. We also have our bi-weekly Level Up podcast, where we just talk about the events of the day and, you know, mostly games game-related. It's not like a pol- politics show. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun, and... There's an $8 level where you can vote on things that we're going to do. And coming up next will be a vote on which game we're going to play for the September episode of Square Roots Versus. It's going to be a... The gold box yeah, game. it's going to be a, a, out of a list of gold box games. I actually am not 100% sure what that even really means, but I bet I'll find out. <laughs> I think You'll it's find like out. those uh, gold-bound books that little children have. Like, yeah, my yeah, first yeah. gold book. yeah. Gold books. You'll learn all about SSI for super sweet interactions. I don't know. Something like that. Anyway, uh, patrons. Uh, do we have any letters? Nope. I don't think we have letters. No right? letters. Our- We've had a very letter-filled series, which has been fun. So please keep mm-hmm. sending those in. But before we uh, move into the final segment where we do a couple of small plugs, Vanessa. Yeah. We have a list of patrons whose names we have agreed to read out on the show. Will you do that? That's true. I will do it. Yay. James Hostetler. Thanks, James. I did a great job on that first one. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Great job. Yeah. Starting Keep out well. Keep pace up, uh, too, because I really want you to drag we- it the fuck out. Sure, no problem. <laughs> David Green, Julian Titus, David Pascal, Nathan Poirot, Randy Pierce, Ben Zinka Banzoni, Megan Sullivan, Jonathan Ellsworth, Dylan Rice, Sam Harrison, Devin Sloan, Danny Lucas, Cody Schwerin, James Plett, Greg Bailey, Race Jenkins, Joseph A. Rogers, Rob Schubert, Stu Skeel, Xavier Krieger, David Shook, Matthew Jorgensen, Kiva Cowman Mosser, Samu Mitchell, Andrew Wyatt, Brian Stone, Aaron Bachman, Robert M. Pullum, Stan, Tracy Tanoff, Josh Anderson, Robert T., Ross Hartley, Tyler Petty, Brody Toy, Justin Hamm, Bree Girth, Meredith Anderson, Brian Pitt, Ward Childress, Patrick Coover, Patrick W. Bears, Wonder Swan, Miguel Torres, Resty Kamada, Tom, Lynn Setchell, Justin Benoit, Vanessa's Mom, Vanessa's Mom. What? Wait. What? What? Wait. Why is there Vanessa's Mom and, in quotation marks, Vanessa's Mom? Well, John, we got a new... Patreon subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> not a joke. This not is a not joke. A, <laughs> a new Patreon subscriber with the name Vanessa's mom. Um, there are many Vanessas in the world, and I don't want to say for sure that this is not a <laughs> Vanessa's mom. But is it my mom? Does she got it going on? <laughs> Why course. would your mom donate twice? Uh, is she just wanting to say hi? No, I mean, I see her all the time. There's no reason for her to do that, just to get my attention. And uh, if she wants to give me money, there are easier ways for her to do it. I mean, so, uh, welcome, Vanessa's mom? <laughs> <laughs> Cameron Show, Jonathan Ellsworth, Ashley Double C- W, Jake Dickerson, and Cyril the Wolf. John, I'm confused. Uh, Which one of Vanessa's moms am I supposed to shoot? <laughs> the one <laughs> the one that that actually likes you <laughs> that's the giveaway that implies that one of them don't <laughs> <laughs> all right so if you'd like to you can send us an email you know our email address it's square roots podcast at gmail.com if you absolutely cannot be bothered to send an email please come see us at the facebook group the square roots podcast group for smart cool very attractive people just do that it's better and tweet us a tweet at us at square roots pod where you can talk to vanessa or john i had someone ask me why does Vanessa not have a Twitter? And I said, well, she does. She's Square Roots Pod. That's right. Our 
intro music for the series is the one ups cover of Terra's theme check out their work at the one ups.com our outro music is a jazzy cover of shadows theme by lord biff music check out lord biff's patreon and youtube as lord biff music links to both artists in the you show should, notes uh, we have you should add the one ups cover of Terra's theme to the end of the uh mp3 next time because it's never gotten a full play and it's really fucking great okay yeah it is really good uh, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you screenshot your review and post it in the Facebook group or Twitter, I'll tell you how you leveled up. For Square Roots, I'm Johnny John Brandon. I'm Matthew Van Zant, And I'm Vanessa as Vanessa. It's mom. Roni. <laughs> Vanessa Roni. Bye. 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 Bye 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 really oh, don't like i forgot uh my level up that i told myself earlier today i was gonna do oh well well I'll, you know what if you say it now i'll cut it in eh, it's all right i'll do it i'll eat some pringles 
I saw yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp. At the same time? At the same time, on the same screen, in the same film called Ant Man and the Wasp. It also featured that guy from the game. And oh, Michelle Pfeiffer. I, that's true. It did have that guy from the game. I watched uh, an episode of Seinfeld today that was a like running um, farce of like Jerry and George get outed in the paper, and it was a very bizarre experience to watch. Outed as what? In 2018. Hang on, just a moment, John. Stop licking chips. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> I am looking right at your fucking face, and you are licking. <laughs> Chips. Yeah, this is so gross. I think he's trying Jesus to Christ. saturate them so they don't crunch. Yeah, that was my goal, but and also it was salty. Uh, add some suspense. Uh, you go to Thasma, where they're from, and uh, it's you the summer. step the the su- the Thamasa Thamasa Thamasa. All I can think about right now is the fact that John is definitely licking Pringles. <laughs> I totally am. <laughs> John was trying to do it Mother in a way that Matt fucker. could not see, but uh, it was very obvious what you were doing. <laughs> his attempts to hide gave away the game. Whereas if he had oh, not attempted it, Matt might boy. have kept looking at his phone as he has been doing all night <laughs> instead of looking at John. But it's Can't so good. Stop. Can't John's not been in camera the whole time. So basically I've got a blank Vanessa screen and John's shoulder to look at. Um <laughs> I'm telling you about this hunt. So uh you stumble across this <laughs> So what happened is I threw a grenade and I happened to land right by this guy. So that was my first kill. You stumble and then across this. The circle started to close. <laughs> and it was real tight. Are you playing PUBG while we're recording? No. Right. How, how would that be possible? I don't know. I didn't know how you play PUBG. Maybe it's a mobile game. It's also on the phone. Yeah, it's free yeah, to it's play on, on the phone. phone. That's true. It is. I actually deleted it on my phone. I don't like it on the phone. I'm too hungry, so you got to get me all them Pringles so I can crunch them right in your ear. (laughs) And if you don't, I'm not going to let you pass. But, uh, oh my God, I can't. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. What's wrong? What happened? You should leave the call for a little while. <laughs> so I don't want to look at you. I don't want to hear you. In my mind, you have turned into a giant mouth, <laughs> crunching Pringles. Like that old. Remember the the old Twizzlers mascot that was just this creepy mouth. Yes, that thing creeped me out. It was creepy. Does the Rocky Horror mouth creep you out? Yes. Oh. I don't like disembodied mouths. And Flash Gordon was there in silver underwear. <laughs> so I started climbing Kefka's tower. All right, Matthew. It's, um... so... <laughs> I just farted for like five minutes. It was amazing. 